Hey y'all, this video will take a comprehensive look at John Bonham's gear from his early days as a teen playing in local bands around Birmingham through his career with Led Zeppelin. I intended to make this video for quite some time now because I've been disappointed with the many profiles in print and video of Bonham's gear. While they are usually well intentioned, they frequently miss the mark in terms of accuracy. Often there are errors, details that are just flat out incorrect, and in some cases, like the Silver Sparkle kit, total fabrications in my opinion. I'm trying to only make confident statements about those details that can be proven, either by photos, historical documentation, or the comments of those who were there and knew John personally. Otherwise, I use the words alleged or supposed as a caveat. John Bonham is a drum legend and his gear has become legendary. So for many fans, accurately identifying his gear and its history is of great interest. Inquiring minds want to know. So, let's start at the beginning. Bonzo said his mom bought him a snare drum when he was around 10 years old and he acquired his first kit sometime in his early teens. He described it as almost prehistoric and that it was mostly rust. Could this be the Trixon kit that he played in his teens? According to his brother Mick, his parents bought him a Trixon kit. Mick said it was sparkling red, but this kit looks to be a pearl finish. Maybe he misremembered. Trixon did make a red pearl finish wrap. Next, it seems, was a green sparkle Ludwig Super Classic. 22 by 14, 13 by 9, 16 by 16, with a 5 by 14, 400 superphonic snare. Chris Welch, in his book, A Thunder of Drums, says that John played this kit while he was in the bands A Way of Life and Band of Joy, and also with Tim Rose. Supposedly, Bonham gave the kit to a drummer named Frank Hall, who is seen here playing it in the late 70s. Hall later sold it to Robin Melville for 40 pounds in the late 70s. Melville had the kit recovered in black by Eddie Ryan. Eventually, in the late 80s, he sold it to Johnny's Roadhouse Music Shop in Manchester. They, in turn, sold it to a drummer named Peter Salisbury of The Verve. There are no photos of John playing this kit, so it's a mystery if and when he used it with Zeppelin. Which brings us to the kit that he was playing from at least September through December of 68, at the beginning of his time with Led Zeppelin. It was a Slingerland kit. Sizes are 22 by 14, 13 by 9, and 16 by 16, with a Ludwig 400 snare. Jason Bonham said the kit was blue sparkle, not green sparkle, as many believe due to a colorized photo of the kit. Most pictures don't show the finish clearly. However, a recently surfaced photo from the Marquee Club in London in late 1968 looks like it could be Blue Sparkle. I believe this kit was used to record the first album. It makes logical sense because he's seen playing the kit before and after the recording session. Also, the drums sound more like Slingerlands to me than Ludwig. The symbols he was using at this time were possibly Zildjian or some English brand like Zinn or Peisty or possibly a mix. It's hard to know for sure. When Led Zeppelin started their first U.S. tour in late December 1968, John was using a Ludwig Black Diamond Pearl Super Classic kit with two 16-inch floor toms and a Slingerland Gene Krupa Chrome Over Brass snare drum. He played this kit from late December 68 until around January 18th in Detroit when his Maple Thermogloss kit arrived. Drummer Tony Newman acquired this kit for a short time later in 1969 or 70 and played it with the band May Blitz. Eventually it seems to have ended up in Robert Plant's possession. He had it cleaned up and prepared for a charity auction sometime around 2017 and it was acquired by the MPOP and put on display in the museum. It seems that recently the kit was taken off display at the MPOP. Bonzo's first iconic kit was the Ludwig Maple Thermogloss. While Zeppelin were on their first U.S. tour in December 68, January of 69, 
they were performing shows opposite the Vanilla Fudge. John admired Carmine Apice's maple thermal gloss kit. According to Carmine, he contacted Ludwig and convinced them to make a similar kit for John with two 26 by 15 inch bass drums, a 14 by 12 tom, and an 18 by 16 floor tom. Later in July of 69, he got a 16 by 16 floor tom and a 13 by 9 tom, as well as a set of bongos. I believe he got these while he was in Chicago. It makes sense since the factory was located there. He also used both bass drums for a handful of shows in summer of 69 as well. John used this kit for a little over a year until the end of April 1970. Eventually the kit was given to drummer Colin Fairley and used with the band String Driven Thing. The story is that Fairley was dating John's sister Deborah, and while visiting one day he was admiring Bonzo's maple kit. John said he didn't use it anymore, so Fairley asked him if he would consider selling it. John said, what do you have on you? Fairley said, a fiver. Apparently John's generous nature accepted the offer. Sometime while he had possession of the kit, Fairley had the 14 by 12 cut down to a 10 inch depth. It was then sold to Paul Thompson of Roxy Music. Paul still owns the kit today. My friend Billy Harrington did an excellent article in Modern Drummer on the kit, at which point he discovered the bass drums were in fact 15 inches deep. Paul Thompson said when he saw Bonzo at the Song Remains the Same premiere, they talked about the kit, and apparently Bonzo seemed like he regretted selling it. The maple kit was likely used on Zep 2 and possibly all of Zep 3. Symbols used at this time would have been 602s and Giant Beats. The next iconic kit was the Green Sparkle, which was likely acquired sometime in May or June of 1970 after their U.S. tour. It was used for live shows beginning in Reykjavik, Iceland on June 22, 1970 until early April 1973. The sizes, 26 by 14, 14 by 10 mounted tom, 16 by 16 floor tom, and 18 by 16 floor tom. I believe Bonzo always had a spare bass drum and snare drum as backups while on tour. Here you can see a spare 26 in the background. The green sparkle drums were used all over the world on tours of the US, Europe, Australia, and Japan. They were used more than any other kit for live performances. Supposedly there were at least two kits. The Green Sparkle was used to record the fourth album, Houses of the Holy, and most likely Physical Graffiti and Presence. Also maybe a bit of the third album and In Through the Outdoor as well. Actually you can see a Green Sparkle kit set up at Polar Studios during the recording of In Through the Outdoor with a clear front head and felt strip. Symbols used with it were mostly giant beats and 602s. The next and arguably most iconic kit was the Amber Vista Light. This kit was played from May 1973 to May 1975. The sizes 26 by 14, 14 by 10 mounted tom, 16 by 16 floor tom, and 18 by 16 floor tom. There's also a rumor of a 20 inch floor tom, which I have never seen evidence of in photographs. Acrylic shells are quite loud and undoubtedly he favored them for playing the large arenas at this time. They have a great combination of projections, sustain, and attack. This document, called a Carnet, shows the equipment that was brought on tour in 1975. It's from Jimmy Page's anthology book. Notice the itemization of the drums, which shows two 26-inch bass drums and two snare drums. He also had a small-sized four-piece version, 18 by 14 bass drum, 12 by 8 mounted tom, and 14 by 14 floor tom, with a matching Vista Light snare that Jason Bonham is seen playing in the song remains the same. It's not known if he ever used the Vista Light kit for studio sessions. Symbols used with this kit were 2002s with a giant beat 24 inch ride. 
His last iconic kit was a Ludwig stainless steel. Sizes are 26 by 14, 15 by 12 mounted tom with small mock lugs, also a 14 by 10 mounted tom, 16 by 16 floor tom, and 18 by 16 floor tom. This kit was used on stage from April 1977 to the end on July 7, 1980. It's interesting that John was on the cutting edge of using new shell types like acrylic in 1973 and steel in 1977. These drums provided the thunderous power that rocked Zeppelin's longest tour and biggest audiences. Here's an interesting photo which shows him holding the spare 26 on his lap. This must be a bit of clowning around during the song Bronyar Stomp. In 1980, he swapped out the 15-inch tom for the 14 tom for the last European tour. The steel kit was used in the studio when they recorded In Through the Outdoor. The symbols used at this time were 2002 all around, maybe an occasional 602. Sometime around 1975, John acquired multiple pieces of swirl black and white Vistalite. There were standard and concert toms and different size bass drums. He played these at home, as can be seen in these photos. Some pieces were given to Chris Welch and possibly Mick Fleetwood had parts of the kit, though I've never seen that confirmed. Here John is seen playing a staccato Voyager kit in October 1978, for the Paul McCartney Rockestra theme recording. There was also supposedly a Midnight Blue Heyman kit. The snare was reported to have been given to his assistant, Mick Hinton, who in turn passed it on and it became part of the rental equipment at John Henry Enterprises in London. There is also a rumor of a Gretsch kit that was given to Bonzo by Jim Capaldi. However, there are no confirmed photos of either of these kits. Bonzo preferred Ludwig Superphonic 65 by 14 402 model snare drums. In the early months with Zeppelin, he used a 5 by 14 Superphonic and a 5 by 14 Gene Krupa Sound King chrome over brass snare. John started using Peisty gongs in March of 1969 on stage and always had one for the rest of his career. They were smaller in size early on around 30 inches, gradually up to 36 or 38 inches as the years went on. Ludwig bongos were seen for a brief time from summer 69 to fall of 69. Copper timbales were on stage often in 1970 as well. He also used a pair of gold splatter on black conga drums from early 1970 to late 1971. John's timpani were Ludwig, one was a machine type, which is hand-tuned, and the other is a universal model, pedal type. I'm not sure of the sizes. He used one kettle starting in October 1972 in Japan. Then he began using two from November of 72 until 1979, when he went back to using one only for the remainder of his career. John used a variety of hardware. In the early days with Zepp, he used a sonar hi-hat stand and a mix of Rogers and Ludwig stands. Usually he used Rogers Swivomatic Swan Leg cymbal stands, and for a brief time he used Ludwig Flat Bass cymbal stands. He always used the Ludwig Atlas snare stand. Eventually he consistently used Ludwig Atlas stands except for the hi-hat, which was always a Rogers, either a Swivomatic, Supreme, or lastly, a big R stand. He always used a Speed King bass drum pedal, and he used a Premier Throne in the early days, then a Rogers Sampson Throne. John used a mix of drum heads, either Ludwig Weathermaster or Remo heads that were either Ambassador or Emperor. He used CS Black Dot heads on the Amber Kit and on the Steel Kick batter side. John is known to have used Ludwig 2B, 2A, Dino Dinelli model sticks, and later Eddie Ryan's custom-made Promuco sticks. John used a Ludwig gold tone cowbell and a hi-hat ching ring. Bass drum muffling always included a felt strip on the batter side and early on possibly crumpled newspaper inside. 
which appears to be visible here, and John Paul Jones has attested to. Starting in 1970, there is what looks like a cutout ring or disc on the front head. Well, that covers all that I could think of. If anyone has any more info on Bonzo's gear, please leave a comment. Special thanks to Eric Levy for providing some photographs and detailed timeline info, and to Pete Echenique for the photo montage. Thank you also to Billy Harrington for sharing his photos and specifics of the Maple Thermal Gloss King. Thanks for watching. <laughs>